Hi and welcome to this very quick time lapse um, of a car illustration. So first I started with a sketch and after I had the perspective kind of figured out I brought in a cube as you could, um, could see um, to yeah to create basically the perspective ruler because every 3D object comes with a perspective ruler in Clip Studio Paint so that is very handy because you can enable the perspective ruler and then um, use the ruler um, to snap to on another layer. Then I blocked out my shapes. Yeah, there are many tutorials about perspective drawing so you should check this out. Um, as you can see, I really started with the um, rough shapes and tried to get the main shapes um, as precise as possible and then I filled in the details and yeah that's a piece of cake um, compared to getting this whole thing um, look realistic. So first create the big shapes and then the details. So I refined the sketch a bit more and then I brought in another cube and angled it a bit um, to have a guideline for my um, wheel which is uh, turned. And then I sketched this wheel. And as you can see I'm trying right now to, uh, to draw the wheel and I'm already filling it with colors but as you can see in the next minutes um, I will um, make a new one, which is a better technique. So forget about this wheel for now. So now, I, now I'm starting to um, to draw the vector lines on a new layer, and that layer is a vector layer. That's very important. And yeah, I'm working basically with the continuous curve tool. Um, set the curve type to cubic Bezier. And yeah, then I start and you can modify the lines in the process, that's very handy. As you can see, I'm really learning most of the stuff about um, curves here in the first minutes. So this is the most important part and as you will see in the following minutes um, it will go a lot faster because yeah, you just have to get a grasp of it and then it's easy. So I duplicated a line here and offset it. That's already um, that's also part of the tutorial, the Bezier curve tutorial I published on Clip Studio Ask. So check this out. And yeah, deleting the overlapping lines. That's another cool feature of Clip Studio Paint. I really love it. Use it a lot. And here I'm just trying out how I want to approach the shading and everything. Um, yeah. So just filling in some more details. And you see um, at this point I'm already a lot more um, proficient, proficient in creating the curves. So just don't give up and give yourself some time to yeah, to, um, to learn this workflow. And that's the cool thing with Bezier curves, you always can edit them afterwards. And yeah, sometimes you have to think about it, what makes more sense draw a line, overlapping line and then delete it or create two separate um, forms. So yeah, now the cage inside of the car. Of course I did use a reference and that is used um, some sort of Porsche as a reference to get some technical details uh, right. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything wrong with 
taking inspira inspiration and yeah it's more a study than an original design yeah if i think about it so now i brought in a tire a blender from blender a wheel um, a 3d model and placed them accordingly and they acted as a good reference point but somehow I didn't like this uh, generic design and therefore I thought about a way uh, how to create a rim or the wheel in a way that I like more that I will show you in a minute yeah yeah basically that's a repetition of everything I've already shown you so I decided to show this quick process this time-lapse um, yeah because because yeah. So filling in some more details and Um, now I've created like the, um, the, the basic shape for the rim and I brought in a symmetrical or s symmetry ruler with like 10 steps and then I drew in vector lines so I had the 2D shape and then I copied it over and transformed it and yeah that was a really good idea. I al also started to, or I also tried to duplicate the li line and make an offset. But um, to be honest, that was a bit more hassle than I expected. So I don't know if I re can recommend it. And I also used the mesh transform tool, which is which comes in really handy. As you can see, it's looking pretty convincing for rims. After that, I I sorted my layers and brought a bit more structure into it. As you can see, coloring my folders to quickly find them in my layer window. And then I filled in like the main shapes. And at this point, I'm sketching out some shadows and trying and yeah, figuring out what looks good and what I want. And at this point I was a bit overwhelmed by all these different shapes so I thought I just start somewhere and I I set the the line art, the vector lines or the folder better um, the folder I set it to um, a reference layer so I could easily select the different parts with the magic wand tool or even um, normal brushes have this option to not um, how is it called uh, don't exceed line yeah anti overflow um, but basically I'm using the magic wand tool and then a very soft brush to yeah because with the selection you have your hard edges already um, figure, yeah sorted out and then you come in with a very soft brush and um, create the soft transitions as you can see I'm refining the shadows with the same process now I'm I've added a layer on top of it. Uh, add glow is the blending mode. And there is a cool layer structure I figured out um, where you can use the uh, tone curve correction layer to really spice up your highlights and all layers. You can 
make a simple brush stro stroke with a soft um, brush look like a metal reflection as you can see here it's it makes so much fun so definitely check out the file which is also included in the gumroad pack you just download it and yeah I can recommend you to go through the whole layer structure and analyze my work. So if you have any questions left, uh, just write me an email or on Twitter or yeah, reach out to me somewhere else. Uh, you could also ask a question on, on Reddit. I have a subreddit I specially made for you. Um, it's in the description or in the uh, readme file included in the gumroad pack the link and also i will show you the link at the end of the video so as you see i'm refining the the reflections with my brushes and also my blur and smudge brush sorry i'm a bit tired <laughs> Yeah, you see, um, one part is to actually draw in the stuff, but I have the feeling with digital art or this workflow, a big part is also to figure out how, uh, what settings you need for what layers. So, and blending modes, you can achieve a lot. I put a gradient uh, map correction layer on the in the shadow folder, the multiply folder. And you get this this special colorized uh, shadow here, which is really, really nice, and I love it. Also, a tip I can give you is um, if you have a correction layer, like a gradient map, you set it, don't set it to normal, but to to color, so it doesn't affect the brightness, but only the color of the image. Or for tone curve, you only um, it, does, then it only affects the brightness so you set it to brightness I don't know if you know about it but in the blending mode they are at the last positions so in this you can see I'm already pretty much done with this this is my car illustration commented time lapse thanks for watching and See you on the subreddit Soulstinger Lab or Twitter, Instagram or send me an email. I hope you learned something from this very quick um, time lapse. Thanks for watching and supporting me. This is Soulstinger and see you next time.